Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you back to WCW Monday Night Nitro. We have a huge night planned. As you can see, this capacity crowd is cheering and excited for the show here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. first going to take you to the ring with a, a very controversial figure in WCW. This man, Booker T, has suddenly changed a bit. At our first WCW pay-per-view, WCW The Big Bang, Booker T faced none other than Bill Goldberg for the World Heavyweight Championship title. It was to be his first defense, and... Booker T won by cheating, keeping his feet on the ropes, holding down the pin, causing Bill Goldberg to lose. Booker T retained the championship at that point, but some of his actions over the last few weeks, especially last week on Monday Night Nitro, when he tried to attack Bill Goldberg from behind, and he also came out and disrespected Hulk Hogan, who returned last Monday night and is, will be here tonight and face off against none other than Rick the Nature Boy Flair for a number one contendership spot. Over the week, if you've been checking in WCW.com, you've noticed that Rick Hulk Hogan agreed to those stipulations is that if Rick Flair wins, he will continue to be the number one contender. Hulk Hogan wins, he will be the new number one contender that coveted spot against Booker T. Let's see what Booker T has to say. This is not the Booker T I know. Not the Booker T I remember at all. Top of the world, but everyone else is trying to take you out, Booker T. That's what happens when you put the strap on and you're in the belt. You become the number one target. The fans seem to still be behind him, but it sounds like he's uh it's not the same Booker T we're used to. Oh, jeez, Booker T just drilling the fans. This is some of the same stuff we saw last week with, between him and Hulk Hogan, a man that Booker T actually respected and a veteran in this industry. I don't think the fans are having it, though. They seem to still be wanting to cheer Booker as though he's the... Uh, Continues to be the people's champ, but I don't think he he wants that moniker anymore. Booker T has a target on his head, and he has Goldberg up against him, Hulk Hogan up against him, Ric Flair the number one contender. Sting originally on that number one contendership spot at the or uh, WCW The Big Bang pay-per-view. Scott Steiner still in the picture there somewhere. Look at just grilling the fans. This is not how a champion should be acting. Just, oh, despicable. Go on, Booker T. Just, just go. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, fans. That's not how uh, how our, how we want our champions to act here in WCW. All right, our first bout of the night is actually going to be very unconventional. 
we're going to have a hardcore match for the hardcore title. We will see Big Vito versus Terry Funk, our current reigning WCW hardcore champion. This is All Out Goes. Um, or excuse me, Everything Goes match. Weapons are illegal. No holds barred. Fight can go outside the ring. No count out. Uh, the last time we saw Terry Hunk, Funk defend the WCW Hardcore title was at WCW The Big Bang against none other than Bam Bam Bigelow, who is currently recovering from injuries he suffered in that match. Several chair shots and several head bashings. He, he, actually, he had his head bashed into a desk, into the side of a electrical outlet box. Just brutal. Uh, chances are we'll see some of that tonight in this match when Big Vito takes on Terry Funk for the WCW Hardcore Championship. Fans in attendance excited to see this match. I know what's about to happen. We're about to see possibly some carnage and bloodshed. Introducing the challenger from Staten Island, New York, weighing in at 255 pounds, Big Tito. There he is, folks, Big Vito. Staring down Terry Funk. Introducing the champion from Amarillo, Texas, weighing in at 247 pounds, he is the WCW Hardcore Champion, Taryn Fiend. All right, there goes the bell, and we're off. One of you folks, if you have small children, you may not want them to watch this match. This can get pretty brutal. It's hardcore bouts. You see a lot of bloodshed in these matches, but that's what's to be expected when you're going for that hardcore title. If that's not a title you're after, then you you don't want to be a part of that bloodshed, then chances are you, this is not the match for you. Big Vito trying out some wrestling moves here. Don't see any weapons in the place. But maybe I spoke too soon. Here goes Terry Funk. Big Vito taunting Terry from the ring. Not sure what Terry was going for there. All right, Big Vito locking into Terry Funk. Terry reversing it. Oh. Notice that there's no count out in these hardcore matches. This match can remain outside the ring. Pinfall must take place in the ring, however. Unlike the backstage brawl, which took place at WCW The Big Bang. Terry Funk with a kendo stick. Ah, Big Vito takes it and whacks Terry Funk. Ah. Don't think that's what Terry expected when he pulled that from underneath the ring. Big Vito lining him up for the ring post. Slamming his head into it. Ugh. Using the ring as a weapon. Taking it back into the ring. Spilling out over the top rope. Most of these hardcore matches take place outside the ring, so don't be surprised, folks, if it stays out here for a little while. Closed fist punch. Terry looking to seek some retribution from the earlier hits. Ah, just cannot connect with that kendo stick. 
Big Vito just pandering to the crowd while Terry Funk tries to get up. Terry Funk mounting an, an offense. Let's see how sh this will be short lived or not. Going for a choke hold. That is legal in this match. Terry Funk going into the ring again. Let's see what he pulls up this time. Ah, chair. Ah, Big Vito takes it away. You do not be want to be on the other end of that chair. Oh! In an innovative maneuver there with the couple cut to the face. Terry Funk getting his close punches in again. Shoot fighter background on display tonight. Terry leaving the ring again. Going back into his bag of tricks. Let's see got in store another kendo stick. Let's see if we'll connect. Oh, big Vito slammed in the back. Just see the marks on the back of Vito. Ref is knocked out. He's got to be careful in these matches. There's just stuff flying everywhere, men flying everywhere. Sit down pile driver. Going for the pinfall. One, two, and three. Terry Funk retains the WCW Hardcore Championship in our first match of the night. Big, big, big Vito put up a little bit of an offense, but uh, Terry Funk continues to prove why the Septuagenarian is a hardcore champion here in WCW. Coming up next, we have Shane Helms to address our WCW audience. After losing at WCW The Big Bang, losing his cruiserweight title to none other than Billy Kidman, Shane Helms is quite possibly seeking some retribution. We'll hear from him next, here live at WCW Monday Night Nitro. Shane Helms just fired up. Shane Helms, one of our younger stars in WCW. Former WCW Cruiserweight Champion. He has uh, disbanded his former team of three count, kind of gone out on his own. Very upset that he lost at WCW the Big Bang.
Ah, calling out Billy Kidman, current Betty City Cruiserweight champion. Kidman defeated Shane Helms, the WCW, the Big Bang. On the most recent pay-per-view. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it in our archives. And here comes Billy Kidman. He is not going to put up with that kind of disrespect. Shane Helms sizing up Billy Kidman. Billy Kidman, usually a man of few words. Let's see what he has to say here. Billy Kidman not taking smack from Shane Helms. Made him hot. Fans cheering, we want Tori, who uh, Billy Kidman's girlfriend, and often accompanies him to the ring as his valet. Well, how about that, Shane Helms? Billy Kidman's cruiserweight matches are not usually boring. They're high-flying action, cruiserweight stunts. Fast pace moves. When these two matched up at the Big Bang, we saw some uh, very innovative moves that Shane Helms did fall to the shooting star press. Which is basically a gainer off the top rope. We're looking at one of the few competitors willing to attempt that move. It's very dangerous, but quite impactful. Fans cheering that they want one more match between the two. That's just setting up a uh, rematch at our next pay per view. Well, possibly on WCW Nitro. It's not uncommon for a Cruiserweight title to be defended on WCW Nitro. It's primarily up to our commissioner. Billy thinking about a Street Fighter cage match. A contained match, contained cruiserweight match in a cage. Be interesting. So disrespectful to the champ. I've seen this out of a lot of people here in WCW. It's just the disrespect shown to their opponents, Just trying to get into the head. Billy really Kidman has been quite the talker since the last time we heard him on the mic. He, uh, he's a quiet person. Billy Kidman here. Shane Helms will put up to Billy Kidman, just making it. I'm not sure he knows that title is on his mind. And he's definitely going to be the next contender for that championship title. Kidman stepping aside. 
Oh, Sean Helms is just evil in a sense. All right, coming up next on WCW Nitro, we have a match scheduled. Our next match will be Goldberg versus none other than the Mysterious Seven. Uh, last week we saw Goldberg just destroy Glacier. And I'm a little nervous for Seven because Goldberg is not too happy after losing his title match against Booker T at our last pay-per-view, WCW The Big Bang. Seven being uh, underneath all that Uncle Fester and white Hellraiser makeup is Dustin Rhodes, the son of Dusty Rhodes, a WCW veteran. All right, let's take it to the ring and see what we have in store. Ah, Dustin Rhodes just going down. Oh, oh wow, Atomic Drop from Dustin Rhodes. Just... Off of these matches, Goldberg lets, a, lets him get a few hits in. Once he gets in that beast mode of his, he just takes him down. Oh. My Goldberg is one of our homegrown talents from Georgia's WCW Power Plant. And Seven, also known as Dustin Rhodes, is a longtime WCW wrestler, having appeared in our organization throughout the years in tag team action and as a singles competitor. And his name, under the name of Dustin Rhodes. He left our organization and took on sort of a weird moniker. And his return to WCW is yet another strange creation out of seven, this dark, demon like figure. He wears white face paint and black leather. Yeah, first. Appeared in WCW in these vignettes where he was stalking children, but we haven't seen that recently. We've just seen Dustin trying out some innovative moves, but I was just trying to stalk Goldberg in that weird pose of his. I have a feeling Goldberg is set to make a comeback in just a moment. Here we are, Goldberg going off the top rope. Ah, oh, caught for that slam to the ground. Dustin Rhodes sewing some moves, some offense. Hitting him with the DDT. I'm just not sure Goldberg is on his A game for being defeated by Booker T, the World Championship title at WCW The Big Bang. As you can see in our archives, it's our first pay per view since WCW was reestablished as a wrestling organization. Purchased by Eric Bischoff and Social Entertainment. Goldberg setting up. I know where this leads. I know what this leads to. Spear, spear. Will he follow up here? Up. Gold District with a reversal. Ah, I said the wrong name. <laughs> seven with a reversal. Excuse me, seven with a reversal. Sorry for the slip there, folks. Belly to back, belly to back. Goldberg just feeding off that crowd, getting ready to enter his beast mode. Seven struggling to get to his feet. Goldberg it can be a bit green at times, but here we go. What is he going for? Face smash off the ring ropes. Goldberg set to take it. Going for that jackhammer. Bam! That's got to be all she wrote, folks. Got to be it. One, two, 
three. Goldberg wins, defeating seven. Is this two weeks in a row we've seen Goldberg win? Is he trying to set that streak back up, or what's going on here? We have seen many of our other wrestlers getting in some offense against Goldberg. It's a big boot to the face there. Goldberg with that spear, uh, right into seven. Now he can come back with the jackhammer and the pin for the three count. Goldberg making a case for why he needs a rematch against uh, Booker T for the World Heavyweight Championship. WCW fans just going crazy. Who is next? We're going to go Goldberg. We'll find out. We'll probably see him next week on WCW Nitro. Coming up, we have a match between one of our younger talents, Sean O'Hare, and someone who recently lost the WCW United States title, Jeff Jarrett, a former heavyweight champion in his own right. Sean O'Hare, a member of the Natural Born Thrillers. Natural Born Thrillers are our tag team champions who we have not seen in action since WCW The Big Bang, where they defeated Air Raid in a very, uh, very sad display of action, uh, winning by count out after a very cheap uh, knockout move to Air Styles. Um, we hope to see them in action soon. But we will be seeing Air Paris later tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, Sean O'Hare taking the lead here in the openings of this match. Jeff Jarrett losing his United States title to Diamond Dallas Page last week on Nitro. And this is the first time we've seen Sean O'Hare. I apologize, no, we actually saw Sean O'Hare at the WCW The Big Bang in the ladder match for the United States Championship. This is the first time we've seen him in singles competition since WCW was returned. Sean O'Hare with a... Just a powerhouse move there. We actually saw Sean O'Hare at the WCW Big Bang throw Jeff Jarrett off the top of the ladder with an innovative move. O'Hare is much larger than Jarrett, but Jarrett's been around a lot longer than O'Hare. Sean O'Hare came up through our WCW power plant. He's been around for about two years. Jarrett having been in the business for years. His father, Jerry Jarrett, owning several uh, different promotions in the South. What's he going for here? Oh, a power bomb! Wow. Surprised to see that from Jarrett up against such a larger competitor than Sean O'Hare. Barely a one count. Look at that arm breaker. Ah, Sean O'Hare with a reversal there. Throwing Jarrett into the ropes. Surprised how the natural born thrillers are actually out here at Sean O'Hare's side. These are there. They join him at ringside. The count one. to one count. Not sure what Sean O'Hare is thinking trying to pin Jeff Jarrett so early on in this match.
Sean O'Hare going for here. Oh, the Centon Bomb. One, two, and two. Two and a half. Two and three quarters. That was so close. Jared making this very slow and base comeback. It's like he's setting up for a pile driver. That was so close. Jarrett going for that figure four leg lock. Shades of Rick Flair, the nature boy. So we saw compete last week for the number one contendership spot. And Sean O'Hare turns it upside down. Jarrett now in pain trying to get out. Jarrett just picking up the big man. Going for a pin, one, two, and Sean here kicks out at two. What's he got going here? Ah, just look at that. It's got to be painful, but leg being extended as far as it can go. Ah, he flipped him over. Kick to the gut. That's some kind of bear hug slam. Jarrett with an eye rate, elbow to the face, hip toss from Sean O'Hare, slamming Jarrett's head to the ground. I don't know folks, this is this is going both ways here. I've, both of these competitors just wanting to prove that they're better than their opponent. Backbreaker. Sean here just full of energy, just full of these powerhouse moves that seem to be kind of flying off. God, what was that? I've never seen that before. Going for a three count, one, two, and three, and Sean O'Hare defeats Jeff Jarrett. That was a close match through and through, but Sean O'Hare just overpowered Jarrett for the win. Hopefully we'll see a replay of that innovative move he did at the end there. Looks like a cart wheel into a slam. That was the Centon Bomb. He thought he had it there. Ref's hand almost hit the mat. Jarrett made a comeback with a pile driver that a figure four leg lock to his signature moves. Here we go. I really thought Jarrett had it at that point. Sean here, here winner, dressing the scrum. Really playing to the fans there. All right, our next match. This is the match we promised you, Chuck Palumbo versus Air Paris. Air Paris is one half of Air Raid, who had a tag team title shot at the Big Bang, but were unfortunately uh, counted out of the match after Air Styles had his head slammed against the ring post and was knocked out, couldn't make it back into the ring for the count, for the uh, 10 count. She Sean Stasiak slid back in, won the match for the Natural Born Thrillers, who are our current tag team champions. Natural Born Thrillers won the tag team titles on what we thought was going to be the final Nitro. Uh, however, this Nitro has been reborn thanks to the purchase by Eric Bischoff and Fusion Media Endeavors. Ah, oh, who we got at ringside here, huh? Sean Stasiak hanging out at ringside to manage Chuck Colombo. Maybe Air Styles will make an appearance later. Eric Paris is a high flying daredevil. 
Chuck Colombo, no stranger to those high flying moves, but just so much larger than Air Paris. It's kind of what's happening here now. We've got him in the torture rack. Air Paris is going nowhere. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. He, man, he manhandled his way out of that. Oh, a neck drop. Spinning neck breaker. Air Paris just keeping with the offense. He's a fast little guy. One of our smaller competitors here. He uh he and Air Styles hail from Georgia. Uh, what do we have going on? Oh I, we knew it was gonna happen. We knew it was gonna happen. They just they cheat. That's what they do, they cheat. This is how they won the match at WCW The Big Bang. We're seeing that same thing now. Just Air Paris though, mounting a comeback. I think Air Paris has the potential to be one of our better cruiserweight stars one day, but as of now he's in a tag team match. He's in tag competition with his partner, Air Styles. One, two, ah, he kicked out, he kicked out. I gotta give Paris some credit there, just, I really thought that was the end. Not sure if I'll be able to mount a comeback again, but we'll see. Here, Paris is only 19 years old, one of the youngest superstars we have here. In WCW. Georgia born and raised. He is a high flying cruiserweight who is trying to take on the Ah! For that frog splash and did not make it. Lumbo countered it. That hasn't stopped st uh, Paris. Bit of miscommunication there. Hurricane Rana, Hurricane Rana. Uh, he's got him up on his back. Uh, you can tell the weight's put him Ah, there we go. That signature move there, Paris. Going for a pin. One, two, and ah, uh, Chuck Colombo kicks out. Seems some major back and forth here between these competitors. You don't make it a WCW unless you can really put up a fight. And trust me, these uh, most of our younger competitors are just full of spirit, talented wrestlers, talented individuals. Trying to keep Colombo down is my guess here. Not wanting Colombo to rise, which looks like he's doing now. What do we have going on here? Check Colombo just choking him out there on the ropes. I'm gonna watch these guys. They just they have some cheap moves. Whew! I've heard. Air Paris just break there. Going for the pinfall. One. Only a one count. Wow. Air Paris just has that stamina. That's what our younger cruiserweight wrestlers. That's what they know. That's what they do. I don't know about this, folks. This looks like it. Going for that pinfall. And one, two. And, oh, kicked out again. Man, Air Paris does not give up. 
He may only weigh about 150 pounds, but he is just keeping up with Chuck Palumbo. Stay in the course to win this match. Every move Chuck Palumbo pulls on our Paris just looks like a great Air Paris in half. I'm surprised that uh, Sean Stasiak hasn't tried to be more involved in this match. We saw this earlier with the torture rack, but Sean just can't keep it in place. Oh, Air Paris is continuing to take that beating. Hit with a... Ah! Oh, his back gave out. Couldn't keep him up. Oh, what do we have here? What do we have here? Air Paris making a comeback. Going for a, an innovative cross face there. Got it locked in. Got it locked in. Chip Colombo wiggling his way out. Air still on the still on the offense. So, oh, don't don't showboat now. Don't showboat now. Going for a roll up. Going for a roll up. One, two. Only a two count. Only a two count. Nice drop kick to the face. I, I don't know which it's Air Paris is mounting a comeback. It's very going for a pin. Oh wow, Air, Air Paris, what an upset victory here. Air Paris, one of our youngest superstars, defeating Chuck Palumbo in what we thought was a one-sided match. That is definitely a big win for Air Paris. Paris, the 19-year-old, 150-pound high flyer, has just defeated Sean O'Hare, and you can see that Sean Stasiak is yelling at him from the side of the ring, and congratulate that young man on his victory. Wow. Just wow. Up next... A surprise for fans of WCW, we have the Outsiders versus the Nasty Boys. The Nasty Boys won an incredible victory last week over Totally Buff, Buff Bagwell and Lex Luger. And tonight, uh, Kevin Nash promised us a surprise, and that surprise has made itself apparent. That the Outsiders have reunited. Scott Hall has returned to WCW, and will be facing none other than the Nasty Boys. We'll see where this goes. Will the Outsiders be victorious in their return bout? Or will the Nasty Boys take a win once again? We'll see. We go to the match. Kevin Nash going at Jerry Sags. Remember guys, the last time we saw Nash, he had uh, he injured himself and he's been cleared to wrestle. And the last time we saw Scott Hall, he was battling some inner demons. He um, 
is back. And apparently the Outsiders are back in action. We've got former tag team champions and members of the New World Order taking on the Nasty Boys tonight and they return bout. Scott Hall, no stranger to chokeholds. He is the bad guy after all. Tagging Kevin Nash in. One of the strategies with tag team wrestling is to you know, keep a fresh partner in at all times. So when you see tag teams tagging back and forth so quickly, there's a reason for that. Going for a tag. Double team on Brian Nobbs. Oh! Brian Nobbs going for a reversal there. Quick thinking on Nobbs' part. Using his weight as an advantage. He probably. I have to say, he probably weighs about as much as Scott Hall, but. I think Scott's much more muscle than Brian Nobbs. We saw last week on Nitro, the Nasty Boys defeated Totally Buff using several uh, moves that well, what would we consider nasty. They were moves that the ref didn't quite see, but they managed to get the victory over Totally Buff. Scott Hall not looking too good here. I don't know if Kevin Nash is, he has a little bit of ring rust on him and Kevin Nash may have made a poor choice in reuniting the Outsiders. Or he should have stuck to the Insiders with Diamond Dallas Page. Just, ah, DDT off the top rope. Scott Hall needs to make a tag. Scott Hall needs to make a tag, and it does not look like that's happening right now. Nasty Boys are a veteran team here in WCW. They've had a long standing history, and not just for us, but in several other promotions. Brian Nobbs actually taking a shot at our WCW Hardcore title not too long ago. Uh, winning it, actually. But I believe he was defeated by Terry Funk, who now is the current reigning Hardcore champion. Paul oh, finally making that comeback and tagging in Nash so he can take a much needed breather. Oh, Nash is taunting. That is one thing they have not missed with Kevin Nash. It's just the all that blatant disrespect he'd offer in the ring. He's just so full of himself. And I do want to point out that both Paul and Nash are wearing an NWO attire. Which I don't know if this is meant to be a, just a reuniting of the Outsiders or a reuniting of the NWO itself, but. With Hulk Hogan's return last week on Nitro. We could be seeing a, a complete reuniting uh, video, but he came out in his, his red and yellow. So we're not quite sure if he is wanting to take on the role of Hollywood Hogan or if he wants to stay in the straight and narrow course of being Hulk Hogan. We will see Hogan tonight in action against Ric Flair for the number one contendership spot, which Ric Flair won the previous week from Sting. 
We won the number one contendership spot against Scott Steiner at WCW The Big Bang. Ah, went for what looked like a power bomb, ended up being a face smash. Wow. Kevin Nash was not expecting that. The Nasty Boys have just been really impressive. The last two matches they've had, I don't know if they're just back in sync together or if this is just a, a glitch in the matrix or something, but they are just tearing the tag team division up. Nash going for it. Oh. Jerry Sags throwing Nash out of the ring. Nash taking quite a tumble there. I feel like Paul should do something right now, but he's just hanging out on the sides over there. Nash is now with a comeback there. Ah, neck breaker, neck breaker. Like I said before, that, there are mats down on the ground beside the ring, but it is still extremely painful to take a move on those mats. It's not just like being slammed on top of a bed or something. It's, it's not the best feeling in the world. We're getting a seven count here. I'm going to get back on the ring. Ah, oh, and Sag's taking him knobs. Nash going for a reversal. Going for that patented elbow. Throwing him into the corner. Tag made to Hall, and the outsiders doing what they do best, working on a double team move. It's Hall to the outside. Uh, it's not much of a comeback here. I'm concerned about the outsiders re-debut, if you will. I don't think they're quite what they used to be. Ah, Brian Nobbs just taking it to Hall. Ah, leg there. No, I'm setting up something here. He looks at that look in his face. Ah, what a just a punch in the face. Just a knockout punch. Come on. Here comes Kevin Nash to break it up. Thank God Kevin Nash made it in there. We see another Brian Knobs and Jerry Sags win, the nasty boys. Knobs getting that look again. Ah, another knockout punch from Knobs. Going for the pin, Nash. Don't let no. Oh, oh my God! The Outsiders lost their return match. They're just not the same. The Nasty Boys taking another win. I just I feel like Nash was on his game. The Hall just was lost in space. I mean, especially when you saw Nash. There's that power bomb that got reversed into a face slam, and then. Yeah, they did some tag moves, but Hall was just not paying attention. He just wasn't in his game, in his element. I'm a little concerned about that. Here mm. are your winners. The Nasty Boys. Jerry, Sapp, and the Nasty, Boy. Nasty Boys with a second win since WCW has returned. Uh, they're making a WCW's made a comeback and so have the Nasty Boys. Wow, and I'm, maybe the Outsiders are disappointed. Nash should be especially disappointed in Hall's performance. Wow. Hopefully that this Outsiders reunion is not short-lived. All right, up next we have a WCW Television Championship match between Hugh Morris and Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner won the WCW Television Championship last week against Hacksaw Jim Duggan. He will be defending it tonight against Hugh Morris, a man who has not held much championship gold, but is a very agile big man. His name, of course, is a pun. Uh, he previously had a different name that I will not repeat, but it was also a pun, but he has thankfully gone back to his former moniker of Hugh Morris. We hope he keeps it. 
Uh, we'll see him go up against Rick Steiner, and we're about to take it to the ring. All right, and we're matches off. Hugh Morris taking the initiative, getting the first strikes in, going for a slam, a backbreaker there. Oh, grabbing him. Uh, Rick Steiner has an amateur background. He wrestled in college, collegiate athlete. As you can tell by his ring attire, that that's something he's brought with him to WCW. He's former tag team champions with his brother Scott Steiner, the Steiner brothers. Scott Steiner, having turned to the NWO, and now uh, wrestling as a singles competitor himself, and losing to Sting at WCW The Big Bang, losing his spot as the number one contender there. Keep in mind that if you are the WCW Television Champion, you will wrestle at, for the championship. You will defend the championship every single week here on WCW Nitro. It is a belt that represents the athletes who put their bodies on the line every single week for our fans. Rick Steiner is no stranger to the WCW uh, Television Championship title. He held it. He's held it on many occasions. Hugh Morris has never held the title, but could this be his first time the championship gold? We will see. Belly to back suplex. I'm telling you, Hugh Morris is a big man, but he is quite agile. He reminds me of Bam Bam Bigelow just being a, a huge bulky guy, but able to pull off these aerial moves and moves in the ring that you don't see many big guys doing. Hugh Morris taking control of the match once again. It's going to be a very short-lived reign for Rick Steiner, but keep in mind this title is defending on every single episode of WCW Nitro from this point forward. So if anything goes, next week we'll have another match, and one of these men will be defending the title against a new contender. It all just depends on who wins tonight, where this gold will go. This is our second championship match of the night. Earlier in the night, we saw Terry Funk defend his Parkour Championship title against Big Vito. Uh, Funk won the match. And what was a stellar hardcore match, if that's the thing for you. We have so many different types of matches here in WCW. Cruiserweight matches, hardcore matches, uh, regular singles and tag team competitions. We have a variety of things here in WCW. At the moment, we do not have a women's division, but if that is something fans are interested in seeing, we could set up a contendership for a women's title. Uh, previous, I guess I'll say incarnations of WCW, that has not been our most popular title, but we have only had, we've had very little when it comes to female talent, but we want to make sure that that is something that's offered. And that may be something we look at in the future if our fans are interested, maybe we'll throw a poll up at WCW.com. But for right now, we are back to the action with our WCW Television Championship match. Uh, Hugh Morris going for a powerbomb. Wow. Rick Steiner just taking a Hugh Morris going up on top. Like I said, this man has some aerial maneuvers that are unseen of. Oh, but he missed. Rick Steiner out of the way at Moonsault. Just, ugh. Did not connect. That may be the turning point for Rick Steiner here because that, oh, he's going for the Bulldog. Going for the Bulldog and he hits it. That may be all she wrote, folks. That may be all she wrote. One, two, and, oh, she kicked out. He kicked out. That maneuver took down Hacksaw Jim Duggan last week. Doing a technical style here with Rick Steiner. Hugh Morris launching a little bit of a comeback. <laughs> round and round he goes into a face smash. Almost looked like a diamond cutter, but not quite. 
a few more just mounting a comeback again. Wow, just I haven't seen this kind of manhandling that we've it before. Hit him with the DDT that just knocked the ref back. That's, that's powerful. Let's see what Hugh Morris goes for here. Slam to the ground. Just trying to pick up Rick Steiner like a rag doll. Grabbing him by the chin. Got him in that chin lock. His neck has got to be hurting. Oh, but oh, 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 he's coming back. He's coming back. Don't count Rick Steiner out just yet. Taking it to the outside of the ring. Got to make that pin count, though. Oh, thought we were going to see a body slam onto the outside of the ring there. Got reversed, ah, oh, slamming into the ground. Just pummeling away. Ah, backbreaker. Rick is not in good condition now. Oh, drop kicks. I think Hugh Morris has been working on his offense since the last time we saw him. Just these, this move set is different. Getting that eight count. Rick knows to get back in the ring. Can Hugh Morris reach the call? Oh, he made it back in at nine count. Well, oh, they want to take it back outside again. They're not done. They're not done. Hugh Morris hitting drop kicks. What are we going to see here? Oh, jeez. Butterfly suplex. Oh. The way your arms are positioned when that move goes over the top. Wow. Got to be painful. They may be looking at another 10 count here if they're not careful. They played it all the way to 9 last time. Will they make it back in? Rick knowing to go back in. They got Hugh Morris dazed on the outside. Come on, Hugh Morris. Wake up. Wake up, Hugh. Answer the count. Answer. 9 again. 9 again. Oh, he made it back in. So close. We do not want to count out. Fans do not want to see a count out. They want to see a pinfall or a submission. Ah. Just a spear into the ring there, the ring post. Ah, face to the turnbuckle. Hugh Morris is setting up something massive here, just manhandling Rick Steiner, throwing him across the ring. DDT. All right, Rick. The dog face gremlin. Using that technical background to try to get in some moves on Hugh Morris. Oh! Wow. Just a lariat for throat. One, two, and three. Rick Steiner retains the WCW Television Championship. He has held it for two consecutive weeks now. Winning it last week and keeping it this week. And he will be defending it again on Monday Night Nitro next week. Against a different contender. Not quite sure who he will face, but we will see him on next week's episode. I have to say, I really thought Hugh Morris was going to win this, but I believe that moonsault he took just... Here it is, that moonsault where he just completely missed Steiner rolling out of the way. That that put an end to him. And here we see that bulldog, which Steiner's patented. He is the dog-faced gremlin after all. All right, Steiner here holding on to that winner, television title. Congratulations to Dr. Rick Steiner on his retaining his title. Coming up next, we have the man known as Sting making an appearance in the ring.
We are not sure what he has to say or why he is here. Last week he lost his number one contendership spot to Rick the Nature Boy Flair. After winning that coveted spot against Scott Steiner at WCW The Big Bang. Um, Sting is a an icon. He is a legend. And he is here to address the fans. Most likely to address someone backstage. And we'll find out who that person is. We'll take you to Sting inside our ring live here on Monday Night Nitro. look happy especially after last week last week's loss really put him set him back a bit in the, when it comes to the title picture something unexpected is happening tonight what could he mean what is he gonna do we've seen sting make some controversial decisions in the past Sting is referring to that guy, but who? Who is he referring to? Who is Sting wanting to call out here? I haven't seen Sting upset this upset in a long time. Ah, oh, Sting is like a Goldberg. Goldberg's been on that win streak lately. Most likely will uh, continue that win streak if he wants to remain in the title picture. He did lose to Booker T at WCW The Big Bang. Sting calling him out. Sting looks fierce in the ring. Goldberg is not having any of it. He's, he's set to wrestle. He looks like he wants to wrestle another match. He didn't even change out of his tights. Coming in the ring. He did defeat Seven tonight. Another man in white face paint, but not quite the same caliber as Sting, though Dustin Rhodes has had a long history with WCW, almost as long as Sting has, but isn't quite the veteran wrestler that Sting is. And Goldberg just not taking it from Sting, trying to dish it back. Goldberg is not known for his speaking, but we're seeing that right now. That's he's, whole, he's keeping his words with Sting. Fans cheering that they want Goldberg. Goldberg is here, folks. Goldberg is here. Sting wanting a match tonight, but I don't think that's fair to Goldberg, having already had a match earlier in the evening. We want Goldberg to be a... Goldberg is a sting. They both need to be fresh. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> Goldberg. Just being savage to a sting. Goldberg is... is he's, he hasn't been here very long in WCW, but in that time, he has made almost as big an impact as Sting. So... Having this kind of rivalry between one another is is not unprecedented. It's they can both hold their own. I give them that. Although I think Goldberg may need to add a little bit to his move set before he takes on Sting, because Sting is much more technical wrestler than Goldberg. The crowd wants it. You can just hear it in their voices. They want Sting versus Goldberg. And this is a match we've seen in the past, but I mean this is. This is the new WCW. This is where we're going, folks. We've got new school versus the old school, and we're not holding back. I mean, the fans are just salivating that this match could be taking place. It may even take place here tonight. We don't know. Let's, let's see what happens in the next coming minutes. 
And we still have a match between Ric Flair and Hollywood Hogan. Excuse me, not Hollywood, Hulk Hogan. Wow. Hulk Hogan. Slip of the tongue there. Fans are just dying to see this match. <laughs> Goldberg, once again, just... I think he's been... Uh, have he's been rehearsing this backstage or what, but it's coming off strong. Wow. I haven't heard this from Goldberg before. Digging yourself a deeper hole, Sting says. I feel like Sting would want to, wouldn't have an issue bearing Bill Goldberg at this point in his career. Uh, Goldberg is wanting it too. Those, I mean, Goldberg, you can just see it on his face. Oh, I'm pretty sure Goldberg just told him he's next. Goldberg just told Sting he's next. Goldberg, folks, that match is coming. It may not be next week. Maybe at the next pay-per-view, I don't know yet. We'll have to see what the WCW commissioner comes up with. But man, that is a match for the ages, and we want to see that. Goldberg versus Sting. Goldberg telling Sting he is next on his list. Wow. It is the time to be in WCW. All right, up next we have a match that we've seen many a time before, but this time... The number one contendership is on the line. We will see Hulk Hogan versus Rick, the Nature Boy Flair, the dirtiest player in the game, 14-time heavyweight champion of the world, against the immortal Hulk Hogan, who returned last week to WCW after a long hiatus from the squared circle. He left WCW on very poor terms at Bash at the Beach uh, after... Um, an altercation with uh, one of our, uh, what would you call them, our creative, our creative, uh, I don't know, what would, you, what would we call Vince Russo? Vince Russo was, uh, he was in charge, we could say that, for a very short period of time, but in that time he caused quite, the, quite a lot of devastation at WCW, but anyway, he disrespected Hulk Hogan to the point where Hulk Hogan left with the championship. Now he is returning to WCW, and he is looking to gain a number one contendership spot so he can win the current World Heavyweight Championship and be considered a true champion. Right now, Ric Flair, oh, what is this? What is this? Booker T is at ringside and running into the, the match hasn't even started. Oh, God, oh, Booker T kicking Flair, hit, oh. What is this? Booker T is ruining the main event. Flair wins by disqualification, but nothing happened. Why? Oh, ending the Nitro on this is just awful. Booker T, what? What the hell, man? Booker T, it, earlier in the night, he just chewed out all the fans. He's just become a bad guy. I don't, I don't think we can call him the People's Champion anymore, but just ruining this huge main event well, Ric Flair still your number one contender and I don't think Hulk Hogan is very happy about it um, we'll see you next week on WCW Nitro same place same time thank you for watching